And of course, I don't have the right size terminal. I know I said that I was just going to leave the wiring loom for the magical appearance at the end of the videos, but I thought, no, might as well do a rundown. It's something I know how to do, so I might as well show you. So, I've gone and done a couple of things. I bought a wiring loom which is actually just some seven core trailer wire. Now there's two different sizes of wire you can get. I got the heavier version. There's also a light version for LED tail lights. And well, I'm planning on using this to run a thermo fan at one end of the loom and a fuel pump at the other. So that's why I got the heavier stuff. I also went and bought some heavy duty terminals like you get in cars everywhere now I'm using these ones instead of these ones for the thermofan and fuel pump because they're going to be drawing a lot more power and the other thing I got was a big piece of cardboard so what I'm going to be doing is moving the chassis off the table a bit. I'm going to be drawing out the whole loom onto the cardboard with all the different spots I need wires to go from which spot to where. Most of this loom we're just going to cut the wires to the length we need and then repin them. From where the coil is that's 300mm of wire from the coil to there and then it goes into the loom and has more. So I'll probably cut that down to about 150 mil so it's got enough wire to come in around and tuck in underneath and plug into what it needs to. Um, yeah, thing is parts like that, they need to be, well, every component needs to have a terminal on it. So you can disconnect it and replace it if need be. There's no point hardwiring this into the loom. If I ever need to change the coil, it becomes an issue. So everything gets plugged. Now, we're also going to be removing a few kill switches because they're not all necessary in this application. So, yeah. I'll clean up the table a little bit, lay my cardboard down and then start drawing out a plan. So, starting with our big piece of cardboard. We're going to have a battery. We have a starter solenoid with two big terminals. Then it's also got two small terminals. You have the coil, and it's got two terminals. We have the CDI. Six pin connector. The rectifier, he's got four wires. Now these two items just have wires coming out of them, so that's why they've just got wires marked. These two items, they've actually got a plug on them. So that's why they've got a plug drawn. So then I can run, draw lines from this one to this spot and that spot to that spot. Yeah. We have an engine. Engine. Alright, the engine has a starter motor, just one wire going onto it. It's also got a wire coming out, which is a plug, and then it's also got another plug coming out. So that's data and, and the gear, that's a starter. Starter, not stator. We also got the spark plug on top. 
Alrighty, what else do we have going on in here? We have the tricky box. And what's the bugs on that? Make that bigger, shall we? Alright, we're also going to have the fan, yep. uh, headlight, four wires coming out. We also have a headlight over on the other side. Yep. Might as well put the little blinker lights on as well. They've just got two wires. They don't look like indicators, they look like people with no arms. Alright. And then at the far end we have uh, tail lights and a fuel pump. What else do we have? We've got a brake light switch in there too. Pins. Ignition switch. The ignition switch has two pins in the middle and three around the edge. Now the two middle pins, they are both positive and now we've got off is there somewhere. We've got on and starter. There's going to be some more things hooked up. Run out of space here. Dashboard switches. Probably not the best place for the switches. They should probably go over there. Ah oh, well. Alrighty. Let's just start from the battery. We're going to have one come straight up and across to the positive. Then we're going to have the other one go across, have the fuse, and then that's going to go through to the middle pin. <laughs> That appears to be everything useful out of this loom. I haven't bothered running in any of the kill switches. And by the look of it, if I just have this and this wired to the motor, it will run by itself without requiring this. It's getting slightly more complicated, 
So I think I'm just going to do this section, which is basically shorten this down and make it work. Now, I don't have a thing on this to hit the kill switch when you turn the key off. So when I turn the key off, I'm going to have to have a relay when the ignition is on. So it's got power coming from the ignition and that will make the relay open. So nothing's going through. And then that will be wired up to the kill switch on the CDI. So then when the ignition's on, you hit the starter, the engine starts, the ignition's on, the kill switch is holding the kill switch wire open, but as soon as you turn the key to turn the ignition off, that will then earth out this line stopping the engine. So I'm going to have to get a relay for that, but I'm probably going to get some for these other two to run the pump and the fan. So first up, we're just going to simplify a little bit. So, we've got all the plan laid out. Now we're just going to start cutting some wires, right? Alrighty. So once I've put everything in there, the battery, it's got about 6mm clearance under the steering column, the CDI has about the same, the rectifier it has to fit up in the top here, so there's not a lot of room there, there's three relays, they're all fitting in the bottom, that's one relay for the kill switch and one for the fan and one for the fuel pump. I figure I might as well put one on each. I could probably put the fuel pump and the fan on the same relay, but I didn't. Now, yeah, it's quite tight. Anyway, keep wiring. hope you're enjoying the time lapse because well this is taking a very long time probably about three or four hours in it so far and I've got well it's the main engine harness now I'm pretty sure I've got it all wired right I'm just using these little bulldog clips for keeping the wires in bundles where I want them I'll test it and if it all works then I will start wrapping the whole loom and there's things like the pins on there all labelled one side to the other I did put this into the actual Cubman there and don't think it really matters how well I do this it's gonna look messy so I might just make new cover panel to go over the front 
and the side just to hide it all because once it's all together you never really need to see any of this so once that's done there's going to be one cable runs to the side and the front and it'll come up to the headlights and the fan there'll be one cable runs down the side to the back and it'll go to the tail lights and the fuel pump and yeah really you will not see much of the loom at all even though it's a lot of work so quick rundown of what we've got we've got the ignition and when you put it onto you can have it on accessories off that's ignition and you got the starter so when it's on the ignition it trips this relay to hold it open as soon as the ignition turns off that relay will trip into the closed position which will then short out this thing and that's the one and only kill switch I could easily put in another one and yeah so that's this one is the the charger so I've got one plug here that goes to the engine and I've got one plug here that goes to the engine there's going to be a little bit of crossover with the wiring um, yeah this one's the starter solenoid super steve um, then we've got two more relays here one's for the fuel pump and one's for the fan probably didn't really need them but I figure I might as well do it now while it's at this stage I've got a couple of earths I've got a couple of positives and well yeah I've got another wire here which comes from accessories so that will go to switch the lighting system so the headlights will turn on and off that's a lot of a lot of work so far but it's 11 o'clock at night so I'm going to leave it there for now as always customize everything